Oh God, it is only with your help that we are able to please you. Give us your Holy Spirit that we in all things may do what is right for you and that you may direct our hearts through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses, Go down at once. Your people whom you brought up out of the land of Egypt have acted perversely. They have been quick to turn aside from the way that I commanded. They have cast for themselves an image of a calf and have worshipped it and sacrificed to it and said, These are your gods, O Israel, who brought you up out of the land of Egypt. The Lord said to Moses, I have seen these people, how stiff-necked they are. Now let me alone so that my wrath may burn hot against them and I may consume them and of you I will make a great nation. But Moses implored the Lord his God and said, O oh Lord, why does your wrath burn hot against your people, whom you brought out of the land of Egypt with great power and with a mighty hand? Why should the Egyptians say it was with evil intent that he brought them out to kill them in the mountains and to consume them from the face of the earth? Turn from your fierce wrath, change your mind, and do not bring disaster to your people. Remember Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, your servants, how you swore to them by your own self, saying to them, I will multiply your descendants like the stars of heaven. And all this land that I have promised, I will give to your descendants, and you, they shall inherit it forever. And the Lord changed his mind about the disaster that he planned to bring on his people. The word of the Lord. Say our psalm in unison. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your loving kindness. In your great compassion, blot out my offenses. For behold, you look for treat deep within me and will make me understand wisdom secretly. Purge me from my sin, and I shall be pure. Wash me, and I shall be clean indeed. Make me hear of joy and gladness that the body you have broken may rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. From the first letter of Paul, to Timothy. I am grateful to Jesus Christ our Lord who has strengthened me because he judged me faithful and appointed me to his service. Even though I was formerly a blasphemer, a persecutor, and a man of violence, but I received mercy because I had acted ignorantly in unbelief and the grace of our Lord overflowed for me with the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. The saying is sure and worthy of full acceptance that Jesus Christ came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am the foremost. But for that very reason, I received mercy 
so that in me, as the foremost, Jesus Christ might display the utmost patience, making me an example to those who would come to believe in him for eternal life. To the king of all age, of the ages, immortal, invisible, the only God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. The crowds were still following Jesus, and now all the tax collectors and sinners were coming near to listen to him. And the Pharisees and the scribes were grumbling, saying, This fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them. So he told them this parable. Which one of you, having a hundred sheep and losing one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the wilderness and go after the one that is lost until he finds it? When he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders and rejoices. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me. For I have found my sheep that was lost. Just so I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous persons who need no repentance. Or what woman, having 10 silver coins, if she loses one of them, does not light a lamp, sweep the house, and search carefully until she finds it? When she has found it, she calls together her friends and neighbors, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the coin that I had lost. Just so I tell you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Grace to you and peace. Please be seated. Good morning. Sometimes I have to remind myself, especially on days like today, 9-11, on the anniversary of uh, horrible events 15 years ago, sometimes I have to remind myself that the God that we come here to celebrate, come here to worship, the God on whom we depend is the same God who transformed death into life. There is a certain hopefulness, I believe, in recognizing that through God's mercy, as it says, as Paul says in his letter to Timothy, that through God's mercy, any of us can be changed. The world can be changed. And as much as there is evil, hatred, pain, and death in this world, we are ambassadors of love. I love what our presiding bishop, Michael Curry, says, yes, bad things happen, and God is still God. And we are part of the Jesus movement, a movement which is called to love forward. I um, was given a few things a, a few weeks ago, a few little stories um, that are <coughs> restoration stories. They, they uh, serve to to restore our, our faith in, in humanity. I know, I, I know faith in humanity is not something we actually preach about here. Faith in God is, is where we are as, as members of the Jesus movement and as those called to pass love forward. We, we, um, we have our faith, place our faith in the hands and the love of God. But sometimes, sometimes there are things that happen here that look like gestures of hope. 
So I thought I would share some of those w w with you. I have to thank um, the person uh, that I have to thank this morning for these is Nancy Smith. Thank you, Nancy. Um, so in Peter Petersburg, Florida, at the Starbucks uh, in, the, in the morning one day, uh, this lady came up and she decided that she would pay for the person's drink behind her. 378 people later, one man decided that he didn't want to do that. And so he said, no, I'll just take my free drink and go. 378 people later. It was 6 o'clock that evening. There was this guy who was director of an, the director of a nonprofit. He came in one Saturday morning. He was going into his office to grab a piece of mail or something, and there was this couple outside the door. He didn't want to be bothered by them, so he just walked right past them. A couple in need, it appeared, carried a bag. He walked right past them. He thought better of it. He turned around and said, what can I do for you folks this morning? They said, um... About four years ago, we came here for help, uh, each of us separately, and, and we both ended up in a, in a homeless shelter. We met there, and we've been married four years, and we're so grateful for all the help you gave us. Um, we wanted to bring this bag of clothes to you. According to um, the National School Supply and Equipment Association, you didn't know there was such a thing, um, 77% of all teachers have to buy their own supplies. 77% of all teachers have to pay for their own supplies. Well, one group of folks decided that, that was not the way it ought to be. So they began to place donors with teachers so that those donors could pay for the supplies and the teachers who don't get paid enough anyway wouldn't have to. 14,000 teachers signed up for this program and 10,000 donors were matched with them. This is a great one. In a little town in, in Michigan, <laughs> a police officer, public safe, safety officer, uh, tick, pulled over this lady whose five-year-old child was walking around in the car, running around, jumping back and forth in the car. And so he pulled the lady over uh, and, and said, ma'am, your, your child has to be in a car seat. She said, sir, I don't have a car seat. So the officer took the lady to Walmart, took her inside, and paid $50 for a car seat for that lady. And he said, it's the best $50 I ever spent. There was this little kid who was having breakfast and had breakfast with his family in a Cracker Barrel, I don't know where, and he found $20 in the parking lot, eight-year-old kid. And so he took that $20 and he put it in an envelope and in the, in the restaurant that morning he, he saw um, this serviceman, a guy who was in the army, um, and he, he went out to the guy's car and put it on his car with a note that says, um, Thank you for all you do. I wanted you to have this money. That began uh, what was called the Power of 20 movement, a nonprofit that takes $20 and moves it forward, pays it, pays it forward. And then there was this little pizza place in Philadelphia, a uh, little old pizza place where this guy, where Philadelphia's uh, got a huge homeless, um, huge homeless community. So this guy who owns this pizza place started a program where if you come there to eat, you can pay an extra dollar and it will provide a slice of pizza for a homeless person. Then you can take a sticky note and place it on the wall and someone who is homeless can come by and grab that sticky note and redeem it for a slice of pizza. Now I know that those stories, gestures of kindness, and gestures of hope are moving for us they do instill in us a certain new confidence in humanity and who we are and how we can be in this world. And I do believe wholeheartedly, and, and you people know this, that there is, there is such a thing as pay it forward. We can do that. We can be age, agents of kindness in this world, every one of us. 
But maybe there's even more. Maybe there's more than just paying kindness forward. Maybe there's something else. Maybe there's, maybe what we're called to is to love forward. In our gospel this morning, we have two stories that two of my favorites, now you know, I have whatever Sunday it is, that's my favorite story. Everybody knows that about me. But these, these two stories from Luke, the storyteller, the physician, the guy who knows how to write a good story and hold your attention. He writes the story of Jesus telling a parable, a story which is about, which draws us in, which points us in the direction, not just of living in this world, but in the direction of the kingdom of God. And in Luke's story, his parable, Jesus' parable, is about this crazy old shepherd who leaves his flock, not in the fold, but in the wilderness, and goes out looking for that one sheep. Now, I know that sounds crazy. It's not just crazy. It's reckless, it's irresponsible, it's the wrong thing to do to take such a risk, to risk everything for one sheep. That is, unless that one sheep is you. Change the way you hear the Psalm 23, won't it? The Lord is my shepherd. It's a story about God's love in the kingdom of God. A love that is reckless. A love that is so radical as to blow our little Christian minds out of the water. So reckless as to make us wonder if Jesus was a sane man at all. So reckless, so radical, so irresponsible as to put us in the place of saying, maybe God's just too much for me. In that story, as Luke tells it, as a description of the kingdom of God, we are each that lost sheep, that lost soul. We are fully dependent on God's crazy love for us, each of us. Then there's that story about the about the lady with the coin, you know, those 10 coins, one of those coins, they're called drachma, uh, one of those coins worth about a day's labor. This is a woman now, as Luke goes out of his way to make sure we know it's a woman, a person who cannot provide for their own means, at least not then. She lost one of her coins. This is a day's worth of nourishment for her. She loses one of those, that limits her life by at least 10%. And she looks around her house. It's all about the search, isn't it? It's all about uncovering things and sweeping in the corners and looking everywhere. And when she finds it, just like in the first parable where they find the sheep, there's this party. It's crazy. It's profligate. It's wasteful. Call everybody together. Rejoice with me. This is two parables about joy. Two parables about what it means to be lost and to be found. Two parables about the crazy, reckless, profligate, out of control, radical love of God, that love which God has for us. Speaking of crazy, Bruce doesn't know this yet, our treasure, and neither does David. Um, um, we, speaking of crazy, we will not take up an offering this morning. We will not take up an offering this morning. If you brought your pledge in a little envelope, great, put it in that little basin behind, in the little brass thing behind the font there. If you want to, that's great. We know you, we know you pledge here. We know, we know your giftedness. You can leave those there. But we will not pass plates today. We'll do something different. Something very, very different. As different as God's love for us is than anything we've ever known. Don't you think in order for a day like today to be changed into something, something transformed, 
to something of beauty in life, don't you think it takes a little craziness? Amen. If you please stand. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit. He turned from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our own sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life world to come. Let us pray for the church and for the world, saying, Lord, have mercy. For faithfulness that we trust in God's promise and live in confident obedience, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For openness and reaching out to all the people of the world, that together we may walk out of darkness into God's light, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For humility, that we glory only in God's forgiving and generous love, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For perseverance, that we daily seek out all who are hurt and cry and are in need, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For comfort for all those in any need, for health for the sick and food for the hungry, that, touched by God, they may shine with the brilliance of God's light, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all those who have fought the good fight and now share in the wondrous vision God promised from the beginning, that we may keep them always in our sight, eager for the day of our joyous reunion, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For Heather, the Rogers family, Sherry, Rich, Richie, Judy, Jan and Bill, Nancy, those who lost their lives on this date in New York, in Pennsylvania, Washington, D.C., their families and those who mourn. Are there others? For the special needs and concerns of this congregation. We pray also for the members of the U.S. Armed Forces and their families, especially Walter, Glenn, Nick, Doug, Michael, Alex, Mary, Micah, Monty, Matthew, and Gilbert. For the safety and health of all expectant parents, especially Jim and Karen. And we give thanks today for the birth of Troy Bobby, grandson of Jerry Siebel, 
and nephew of Stuart and Kim Buckley. In peace, we pray to you, Lord God, remembering today the Anglican Church of the province of Uganda and their bishops. And we pray for the churches of Colorado, especially the Church of St. Michael the Archangel in Colorado Springs, St. Charles the Martyr Church in Fort Morgan, St. Lawrence's Church in Conifer, St. Matthew's Church in Grand Junction, and the Caring Association for Native Americans in Denver. Please join me in affirming our vision statement. The mission of St. Paul's Episcopal Church is to live out the love of God as seen in Jesus Christ. We will, with God's help, discover God's presence in word and sacrament, share God's word, nurture God's people, encourage congregational and personal growth on our shared journey, and act justly and peacefully. Most merciful God, we remember before you all the poor and neglected persons whom it would be easy for us to forget, the homeless and the destitute, the old and the sick, and all who have none to care for them. Help us to heal those who are broken in body or spirit and to turn their sorrow into joy. Give us this love for the sake of your Son who died for us. Amen. We pray to you also, O oh God, for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown things done and left undone, and so uphold us by your Spirit that we may serve you in newness of life to the honor and glory of your name through Jesus Christ our Lord. May Almighty God grant us forgiveness of all our sins and the grace and comfort of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please stand. The peace of the Lord be always with you.